Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager here once again with another video on The Flash Season 5. And just firstly, sorry if the audio is a bit strange. I am not at home at the moment, so the next two or three videos might be like this. If it's weird, I'm sorry, I can't do anything about it. But to sort of make up for this weirdness and just to celebrate The Flash coming to an end for this season, I will be doing a giveaway for the new sort of like special edition Jim Lee Flash Funko Pop. You should be able to see it on screen at the moment. It's like a comic book panel, uh, panel sort of thing. It's, it's pretty cool. It's one of the probably the coolest Flash Pop that's been released. So I'm giving that away in this video to, you know, being the chance to win that. All you have to do is leave a like on the video and just leave a comment in the comment section down below with just, uh, you know, your general thoughts on this video. So watch it, then get active in the comments and you're entered. So in this season of The Flash, we of course had the mantle of Cicada, terrorizing not just Team Flash this season, but the meta-human population of Central City. With that starting with Orland Dwyer, uh, obviously it was meant to be David Hirsch, but timeline changes, I guess, but yeah. So Orland Dwyer, and then moving on to the, uh, his niece from the future, that being Grace Gibbons, who we, of course, have like, you know, sort of hung around with this season or during this season at points. But most of the time during those points in the season, we've, you know, seen her on screen. She was comatose. And we are going to see all of this like Cicada stuff come to a head and like the big Cicada story come to a head in episode 21. And of course the finale as the Grace version of Cicada goes ahead with the plan to, you know, disperse the failed prototype version of the metahuman cure formed by Cisco earlier in the season, which basically does the opposite of the cure. It's a virus. That's what it's, you know, it's a virus. It's the opposite of the cure. So instead of helping a metahuman out and taking away a, like a burden that their powers could be, it will basically kill them or make them very, very, very sick. And through the use of that cryoatomizer that was stolen from Thomas Snow with the, you know, with the deadly prototypes, uh, every uh, metahuman should be, uh, you know, quite scared and worried. But as we saw in last episode, that being episode 20, the episode, you know, where Nora teamed up with some of the past villains on the show is basically like the rogue episode for the season. We saw her conjure up this, uh, this plan to steal some weapons from McCulloch Industries, which would be, uh, which would be worth around, a, you know, $1 million a piece. Well, that is what she told the villains at least. Now, what Nora was really doing was following a plan or a mission set out by the Reverse Flash himself, Eobard Thorn, which was to do everything we saw in that episode, you know, to get a special device or weapon of sorts that has the capability to destroy Cicada's dagger, basically completely break it down and just turn it to ash and just crumbles. So basically, yeah, you know, dagger crumbles, I guess you could say. So we are obviously going to see that come to play in episode 21 in the next week, roughly. However, as I have said, I still think the Grace Cicada is pretty overpowered, even without that dagger. So it might help Team Flash out like a little bit, but nothing major. Like she still owned them completely without the dagger. But when it comes down to it and you think about it, I don't think the dagger being destroyed is going to help out Team Flash as much as it is actually going to help out our good old boy in the future who is currently stuck in a cell in 2049, that being Eobard Thorn. Now, obviously, guys, throughout this video, um, there's some, you know, some of the theories, I guess, here. So be sure to be active and, like, let me know what your thoughts on them are because, you know, I like to get the feedback in regards to them. And also just a mild spoiler warning as we will be referencing and most likely showing some set photos from the finale as well in this video. So I'm sure most of you guys have seen it anyway. Way, but just a mild spoiler warning for those that haven't. But as we know, throughout this season, Earbud Thorn has been helping out Nora not only as like the more experienced speedster helping out this new newbie inexperienced speedster, but also in regards to her movements and what she does and doesn't do during her time traveling escapades back to our present day. Now, this whole time, I think we all suspected that he wasn't just doing this out of the goodness of his heart because, well, Earbud doesn't have a heart, does he? So there was some like ulterior motive as to why he was helping Nora out, which I think we all narrowed down to whatever this thing was uh, that would allow him to break out of prison or it would, you know, stop and prevent whatever that timer was counting down to or possibly even both. And I think some of you or hopefully, you know, most of you know what I am actually getting at, but let's move on to all of that right now. So even though it was revealed a bit later on in the season, like a bit later than I think we thought it would, it has been brought up quite often since it was initially said by Eobard, and that is that the end goal, or, you know, chuck in a relevant meme, the end game of Eobard's plan is for that dagger of cicadas to be destroyed. Sure, Eobard says that the final step is to, you know, save Nora's father, Barry, but that's what he's saying to Nora. He has to, you know, give her some reasoning and some motivation to try and, you know, as hard as she can to complete the mission, if you want to call it. So Eobard is just like striving to get that dagger destroyed, which is why Nora did what she did last episode. It was all pushed forward by Eobard, who obviously would have been a bit triggered back in, I think it was episode 16 or 17, when Orlan was cured, but Grace just, you know, flossed her way into Star Labs and took the dagger for herself. 
But hold on, Pagey, Pagey mate, you idiot. Why is the dagger so important in Earbud's time? Sure, in, pre in present day, it's like an issue for Team Flash because of what it can do and how lethal it is, but specifically to Earbud, why does he want to destroy it so badly? Well, let's go over two possible options that I would love to see possibly go down on the show this season in the last, well, two episodes, but I guess specifically the finale? Now, I would like to see one more than the other, as I think it makes more sense. That would be the second option, but both of them could work. But yeah, as I said earlier, please let me know what you think of these in the comments section down below. So the first option, which is the option that I don't think would happen out of the two, I think the other one's more likely. Like, this one's the least likely of these two options to actually occur on the show, and that is that Sakata's dagger is what caused Eobard to get locked up. Now, they never highlighted or even, like, really referenced in any detail how Eobard was captured and put into Iron Heights. Like, was it Barry that caught him, or was he captured after Barry died by another source? As we've seen with Sakata's dagger, it's extremely overpowered, and I don't think anything Reverse Flash did would be able to negate the effect that the dagger has on him and other metahuman abilities. Like, we've even seen the dagger, like, almost, like, keep up with Barry and Nora when they're using their speedster abilities. Like, it's really, really OP. But as we know, Sakata is a metahuman hunter or, you know, a metahuman serial killer. So, Reverse Flash shouldn't be excused from the radar and target list of Sakata. So, it is very plausible to say that Reverse Flash maybe just got caught up in an altercation and it was possibly just at the wrong place at the wrong time, which led to him having his powers drained by the dagger, which led to him being captured. This would then lead, you know, him to just, you know, sit on that thought and what happened and then be presented with the opportunity to possibly change his fate when Nora came into his life. Now, even if it is just another version, like his past self that doesn't have to go through everything following that meeting with the dagger, in the set photos we got from the finale, Tom Kavanagh is playing a version of Wells Abad or Harrison, or like the Harrison Wells Eobard Thorn that has black hair. So he isn't rocking that, you know, that blonde type of hair that we have seen him, you know, with in his cell this season. But, get, but then again, like maybe the cell could be affecting his identity, replicating stuff, technology things. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe that's what's happening, which is, you know, making some of the original Eobard Thorn look to peek out a bit, if that makes sense, like starting with the hair. But yeah, essentially, like if he, you know, was able to destroy the dagger, would the one that would like the version of, you know, reverse flash or Eobard Thorn that appears in the finale in those set photos be another version like from earlier on, like, you know, 13, 15, 20 years in the past. It's a bit confusing because it, the, the flash timeline it works really weird so i don't know we'll have to wait and see but he does rock up with the black hair he doesn't have any of that blonde hair so either the cell is making him go blonde and sort of negating those that technology or it's going to be a different reverse flash that maybe is saved due to the lack of the dagger that appears and goes haha you changed it or, or something like that who knows but now let's move on to the second option, which I think would be the best way for the show to almost basically, you know, connect everything together and make those who aren't the biggest fans of Sakata and her story, which I can understand why you would think that and be in that frame of mind, like, don't worry. But yeah, I think it, it would swing some people's opinions of the Sakata story and its relevance this season and, and the time that the show spent on it. And that is if Sakata's dagger in the future, basically the properties of it are used to power the dampening cells or even the dagger itself could be, but I'd maybe just say some properties of it. And in particular... Eobard Thorn. It's used to dampen Eobard Thorn, but also the dagger itself or something heavily based off it will be used to end Eobard when that timer outside his cell hits zero. So if Nora is successful in using that device which Eobard instructed her to get in last episode in order to destroy the dagger, that would affect that cell technology and possibly allow Eobard to use his powers in his cell, which would then easily allow him to break out and cause some, you know, major havoc. But what havoc would that be? Well, as I was saying before about those like set photos from the finale for this season, Eobard does show up and has a showdown with Team Flash, but in particular, Barry and Nora. So I would have no idea if Eobard has an actual plan for when he comes back here, or if he would just be running back to like rub it in their faces and sort of like be very smug that he was able to manipulate Nora to the point where like right under the noses of all of them, she was able to save him in the future. Even after Barry sort of mocked Eobard's situation when he met him back, what, episode 18? I think it was, yeah, episode 18. And also, Barry would be proven right and everyone else proven wrong as he was so against going forward with anything involving Nora due to knowing deep down that he was just using her, like, Reverse Flash was just using Nora and manipula manipulating her to get what he wanted. Like, Eobard is selfish. It was always going to end up that way. In regards to that device that Nora has, I'd, I'd be surprised. I have a feeling that maybe the dagger will be destroyed in episode 21, so this week's episode. And episode 22 will be dealing with maybe some ramifications maybe the virus does get out there who knows but i think that because the finale they've sort of baited people with the synopsis for it it says like something about like reverse flash fighting barry when we can tell from the set photos and just the general filming schedule for this finale that 
it's pretty baity. Like the Cicada story is still going to be like three quarters of this episode in the finale. And the reverse flash is just basically going to be like a cliffhanger stuff. But in regards to that, like, will Eobard die when he comes back here? Like, I'd, I'd be very disappointed if he did. It'd almost feel like a waste of time. Like, people say that the Cicada story is a waste of time. How much of a waste of time would it be if Eobard came back and he just dies in this finale? Like, he's there for 10 minutes and then dies. That would suck. That would suck the biggest Bebo balls of all time. So, hopefully, that does not happen. But as I was saying, I think all of this, if it does, it goes, well, not full circle, but if everything's connected, it does make Sakata's story worthwhile for the most part. Like, I've enjoyed parts of her story or his story as well early on. I just feel like the character was brought in too early. Like, episode one, are you kidding me? Like, they need to do this, like, stop bringing in villains so early. Do it episode six. That's the best time to bring in a villain. But because it was brought in so early, just caused gaps and inconsistencies and just annoying parts like the flying away and stuff. It could have been handled better, but if they can make this work, then I think everything feels worthwhile. And I don't think you'd have too much of a ground to stand on and complain at the end of the season about the story. But thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome. Uh, if you could drop a like on it, leave your thoughts. As I said, if you do both of those things, you're entered into the giveaway. And if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And um, yeah, as I said, sorry about the audio. Hopefully it wasn't too bad. But until my next video, which will probably have this same audio, uh, I'll catch you guys later. And uh, yeah, goodbye.